What's up, Zox fam? And we're back with some more Dislike. Now, we're going to be getting into some low tier must builds for Desolate Lands. Now, I feel like this is actually pretty important because a lot of people tend to neglect. Um, and like I said, this is all coming from me doing account reviews, looking at uh, different accounts and just seeing where people are at. Uh, I felt like this was really really important because a lot of neglect has been happening with some of these lower units uh, and just seeing the value that you're able to get for these units in the end game standpoint uh, is really really important so we're going to be getting into that uh, but of course guys definitely make sure that you like and subscribe so that you don't miss on any of the exclusive content coming to the channel but let's go ahead let's get right into it because we got a lot to talk about all right um so the first unit we're going to actually be taking a look at here we're going to actually scroll all the way to my epics here. All right. Um, now, we're going to be looking at if I can find her or did I pass her? Uh, first one is going to be. And I think I think I passed her. I'm pretty. OK, no, no, no. Here she is. Chloe. <laughs> here we go. So we got Chloe. All right. We got Chloe up first. Now, Chloe. Um, is obviously a amazing esper to invest in um, a lot of people um, typically build her anyway for like most things if you're doing like trial events or just general content clearing like she can work extremely well as a dps she can buff strip um, and again um, for where she shines uh, she's really good for uh, shadow fire and shadow gal i will say for shadow fire you will find that she can be inconsistent in certain cases uh, but she definitely still can operate well as a dps also to help with the ad clearing uh, and then for shadow gale just to kind of help out with the damage she's excellent there so um this is definitely a highly recommended unit that i would like bring into there um as far as like sets um war machine crit rate i mean i, I know somebody's gonna ask that like how would you build her uh war machine crit rate uh if you're really looking uh for a build crit damage percent attack percent uh, attack percent or speed really depends on your lineup uh in the rotation um, but again, I do use her outside of just Deso, so just want to kind of throw that in there. Uh, now, the next unit that we have on the list here is going to be Meredith. So uh, let me find her. Here she is. Uh, so we have Meredith on the list. Now, um, obviously, I'm rocking her on the Astralis set. I think that that is one of the best sets to throw her on. Uh, we have her on the Adamantine or the Aegis set, uh, which is going to give that additional shield, uh, HP percent, HP percent, and speed. Um, and then, of course, for what she's doing. So a lot of people have asked the question why she's so good. One, she's a 25% speed lead. Now, the thing is, is that how many four stars in the game are you going to find that are 25% speed lead? Um, not many. <laughs> in fact, not, not at all, actually. Uh, because, like, runner-up, you got, like, Parmy. Parmy's 20%. You got Long Mian, who's also 20%. So, Meredith kind of separates herself. Like, I, I don't think sometimes, like, uh, you know, p players have, have noticed that she has such a high speed lead in comparison to some of the other units. Like, units that are, like, pretty co uh, comparable, for example is like ollie like right like ollie has a 25 percent speed lead so she has a speed lead equivalent to a five star so just to kind of give you perspective there right um now on top of that she's also going to be giving you some hp scaling damage um as well as being able to grant shield uh and that shield strength is based off of the overflow healing she can also grant recovery and she can also give your entire party speed up buff which is super huge for the rotation uh, now she also can give you crit resist and defense up so that also allows her to be able to man the front row of uh any of the desolate land fights and yes i said it she can literally be used on all three desolate land fights so that's what makes her so freaking good uh s1's not super crazy it allows her to spell a buff but all the other support that she gives with the rotation with the speed buff she is absolutely amazing to have on any composition now the next unit we're going to be taking a look at Let's go ahead and find him first. Is going to be Sanders, okay? Uh, so Sanders is absolutely amazing just in general uh, on uh, Desolate Lands. The two uh, that you would be running him in primarily would be Shadow Stream and Shadow Gale. Uh, now, what he's offering obviously is damage. You're not really making any use of his stun or the AP pushback. It's just the raw damage that he can do. So despite the debuffs that he has, Sanders actually is an amazing DPS for this kind of content. Uh, the other thing is too is that he also is a 25% speed lead oh i forgot about him yeah <laughs> i forgot about sanders sanders is also a speed lead outside of meredith but he's not as much support as she is so he's more damaged so just kind of keep that in mind um now on top of that you got two abilities that's pretty much able to give you damage he can grant himself speed up um as well uh and then of course with this this is just essentially more damage um but 
when you're looking at his build, uh, what I would say for um, like depending on what you're doing, when you're going for things like um, like desolate lands, you want him to have more damage. So I actually have two builds for my Sanders, uh, and I'm pretty sure I'm, I have them set as presets. Oh, wrong thing. I'm pretty sure I have them set as presets, but I have a build essentially that is so like for here. See, I have one that's Shadow Gal, uh, and then I have a Sanders for like a Pep Chronos, and then I have another one for Shadow Stream, right? Uh, so he's a little bit more damage oriented when I'm using him for uh, for uh, pretty much anything. Like I actually I'll throw him on a crit damage um, build uh, for like anything Desolate Land. So that's just kind of that. You don't have to go speed necessarily. Um, it's still not a bad set to run him on, but I try to scale his damage as much as, as much as I possibly can so he can give me more utility there. Now, the next unit we're going to be mentioning here is one that is actually a three-star that absolutely gets slept on, and it's Unky Cha. Uh, Unky Cha, one of my favorite uh, three-star units to use in Desolate Lands, and yes, he can be utilized in all three Desos. Um, one of my recommend uh, things to do with him in terms of a build, HP percent, defense percent, or you can do defense, defense percent, and then speed. Um, as far as sets, win set is fine. Master Groove is fine. Um, but if you want him to be able to potentially rotate his ability, keep in mind, it does create a little bit more RNG in your rotations because if you use the set, it can randomly work. Uh, and it's the Ocean Wave set. So some people do use him on the Ocean Waves, but I prefer Windwalker because it takes away those inc those random inconsistencies of saying like getting ex plus versus getting ex plus plus with him being able to help somebody um you know get their ability cooldowns quicker so getting into what he does um he is essentially a skill cooldown battery um so not only is he giving a uh, capability of reducing cooldowns by one turn uh, but he's also able to grant an attack up as well and if they already have that attack up that's when he gives them the cooldown uh, his passive also allows him to be able to grant crit rate up to two random allies uh, and then as well if they already have that attack up he grants the ability cooldown um so s1 not really crazy the biggest thing though is it allows him to be able to rotate himself faster and because he is the skill cooldown battery for your party if he can go more times that's just more opportunities for you to be able to use your s3 your s2 really really important um, not only for damage but maybe even for removing like venom smear for example so an absolutely amazing esper um, and because you are able to build him tanky he doesn't have an issue with survivability that's one of the great things about running unky cha in desolate lands uh now one of the next espers that we're going to be taking a look at is going to be uh let's actually get her up on screen here oh oh nope that looked like her uh freya okay so freya is another esper who is absolutely amazing uh for desolate lands let me see if i have a, have a build on her i actually run her on ocean waves you can run her on windwalker as well um i will say uh hp percent uh hp percent and speed uh is what you're kind of looking for now you're not really making too much of a uh and, and i mean you can technically use her for all three i personally like to use her for like shadow fire that's like one of my favorite ones to use her in but she can technically work in all three um she does allow you to be able to inflict speed down um not too much of a thing there but you can use that in other pieces of content um the main thing that you're pretty much going to be focusing or honing into is the brisson gommons watch uh brisson gommons watch is going to be able to dispel debuffs from one ally uh all ability cooldowns are minus one turn um and then they are obviously granted the brisson gommons watch which they cannot be debuffed uh, in that state. Um, and then with her S1, she also has a 25% chance of gaining an extra turn. So this makes her really good for um, like anything that requires her to be able to try to cleanse something or to give herself an extra turn to get rid of something. Um, she's really, really solid for that. Uh, so yeah, like I said, super, super easy to build, nothing too crazy. And she actually works really well for other pieces of content, PVP, um, stuff like that. And definitely like PVE stuff, primarily PVE, not PVP. Yeah, there we go. Uh, now, another one we're going to be throwing in here that is an absolute must invest is Siren. Uh, so Siren is going to be for your Shadow Gale, okay? Uh, so Shadow Gale is going to be, um, you know, one of the huge, like, pivotal points for her to be, uh, I would say, giving you the most uh, out of her kit, right? Uh, now, when you're looking at what she can do, so the big thing is, is her S2. She, she dispels one debuff from each ally, grants speed up to all allies for two turns, and defense up for one turn. 
Now, when you get the school uh, skill cooldown in this, it's a three-turn cooldown, which is actually beautiful. Um, S1 doesn't really matter so much because it's asleep, uh, and neither does the uh, S3 as much. The big thing is is her S2, okay? Um, and that's going to be really, really, really powerful on Shadow Gal. So just want to kind of throw that in there. Now, as far as the build with her, I have mine built with Windwalker, uh, 83% accuracy um is what i use it for everything else but you can just go for uh hp percent and then of course speed okay uh so keep in mind i use it for other content because she can't sleep like i use her in my sentinel hunt uh so that's pretty much that so yeah you can go for any of those stats and she should be good um to run like that all right uh now the next unit we're going to be taking a look at here is going to be lee guang so Li Guang is definitely going to be another unit you want to build. I actually am running mine on the Astralis set, but you can run her on Windwalker. I have mine built for damage. Um, I do use mine for uh, Fafnir as well. Uh, so that's another thing that I kind of took into consideration. Um, but you can go for uh, the Astralis build, crit damage percent, attack percent, uh, attack percent or speed. Um, or you can do Windwalker, same build, right? Uh, now, uh, as far as what she's doing, she is a DPS, right? Uh, so essentially the biggest thing that she's adding to you know the team or to the party um outside of you know just her being able to do damage is she can also help your team rotate uh so i think um if she steals any buffs which she's not going to be able to um but she is going to be able to do damage based off of the speed um and that's another thing that you'll be able to take advantage of now uh each hit she does with her s1 also grants her additional ap so that's another thing that's going to be super huge for her as well so again it's kind of similar to like unki cha i think he gives himself like 25 percent. she does two hits so it's 30 percent um, so it just allows her to be able to rotate um you have her paired up with any other ap manipulators in the party um that's going to be huge for her to be able to do more dps right um, and she's good for shadow stream okay so i want to throw that in there now uh next unit is uh and i guess this will be kind of like an honorable mention if you have her uh is going to be let's see if we can get her up here first azernif all right, so as and if I think a lot of people don't realize how good she actually is for uh, Desolate Lands, because you might not hear too much about her in anything else, but as and if is actually utilized in all three. <laughs> Uh, so what she does, she can AP push your entire party. She also grants a damage reduction ability and can also heal. Um, so when uh, opponent or ally, or sorry, is when an ally is hit with the Lotus Mark, uh, it then will trigger her AP push of 20% to that person um, or to each member that has it, which the entire party will have it. She can also heal all allies 10% uh, of their max HP and 80% of her attack. Uh, and then as well as she can grant a recovery. Um, so then the S1, she can also dispel. That's useful for some other things. Um, but typically when you're looking at a build, which I don't, oh, okay, I actually do have a build. Uh, HP percent, HP percent, speed, right? Very simple. Don't got to go crazy. She should have enough attack value based off of your, like your subs and stuff like that for her to still be able to make use of that healing wise. Uh, but primarily you're really looking at like the movement that she can give. The damage reduction makes up for some of, you know, the healing potency. So that's just, again, uh, a thing that you can consider there but yes she is utilized for all three now another bonus unit i'll throw in there uh since we're over here is going to be catherine now uh catherine i do typically have her built uh with deeper percent on windwalker uh also you can go hp or defense it doesn't really matter um, i have her accuracy for some other things that i would use her for uh and then of course speed right uh now with that um as far as what she's bringing to the table she is able oh Oh, 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 go back. There we go. Uh, she is able with her S3. She is able to grant your entire party standoff, um, which can actually be pretty useful in like things like I was using her in Shadow Gap. So Shadow Gale is actually pretty useful um, for her to have this ability because not only does it allow her to proc the standoff, but when an ally dies, she is also able to reset ability cooldowns. Typically, you don't want anyone dying, but if so, it's there. Now, the biggest thing to her kit is her passive. So at the start of Catherine's turn, she dispels one debuff from all allies and each debuff grants an allies a 5% AP push. And when an ally falls, Catherine gains a 15% AP push. Typically, like I said, you won't be taking advantage of that last part as much, but you definitely are going to be utilizing that 5% AP push. Uh, S1 is also going to grant miss up rate, which is really not too much of a big deal, but really the passive with the S3 um, are going to be your biggest friends uh, when you're talking about desert lands. Now, um, again, 
Um, another unit that I want to throw in there that's actually fairly new, and I want to throw it in there because I want to emphasize how important it is to get her, and it's going to be Ude. Uh, so Ude, we're going to uh, already say that so far from what's been tested, she is actually very good for Shadow Gale. Um, what she's obviously doing for your party, dispelling two debuffs from each ally, uh, grits them attack up as well, uh, so they can do more damage for your damage dealer. She can also give shield strength, um, or give absorb and shield to uh, one member on the party, um, who typically is the one that's suffering more than likely. Uh, and that shield strength is also 100% of their max HP. Um, and then the S1 also allows her to be able to grant one random ally 20% AP. Uh, keep in mind the speed down doesn't matter so much, but you're still able to get that AP push of 20%. Now, as far as a build, um, what I've been running her on is Ocean Waves, 80%, 80%, um, primarily for what I like to use her in, but you can run her Windwalker as well. Uh, same build, uh, and then Master Groove with speed. I just don't have the boot on, but keep in mind it's speed, right? Um, so yeah, that would be pretty much that. Now, another unit we're going to give that's another honorable mention, because Uday right now you can obtain for free, so that's why she's not an honorable mention. Uh, but another honorable mention is going to be Alice. So if you have Alice, she's definitely going to be a unit you want to build for your Desolate Lands. Um, the build I have on her, HP%, HP you can do HP defense, uh, and then, of course, speed. Um, I think I have her on HP. I can't remember why I have her on HP. It's something I was trying, I think. Um, but typically you want her on speed so she can rotate. Um, but yeah. That would be what you would ideally be aiming for. Um, now, as far as what she's doing, she's able to uh, increase uh, your allies' buffs by an additional turn. Uh, she's also able to grant all allies' crit rate up and speed up for two turns. Now, with her passive, if Alice can take action at the start of her turn, grants ally buffs attack up for one turn. So not only is she giving the attack up, but she gets crit rate and speed up all by herself. And then what makes her S1 really broken is that when she hits, she has a 30% chance of calling one ally for an assist. So it's kind of like a pursuit in a way. Like she hits and then an ally is able to come up and do their thing. So she allows you to be able to actually kind of scale your damage. It's a little bit of RNG that's involved in that, but it is still very, very useful. So I definitely wanted to throw her in there and mention her. Uh, now, um, another Esper that I want to throw in here, uh, who I feel like is pretty good specifically for uh, Shadow Fire, uh, is going to be Jiang Mong. Okay, uh, now with Jiang Mong, uh, Jiang Mong is going to be giving you uh, a lot of value because of her Nether Bloom proc. Um, this is something that works really well on the ads when you're looking at trying to do uh, Shadow Fire. So that's something that you want to consider. This also, like when she gets down to it. Uh, her S1 is able to clean up pretty nicely as well if you need that. Um, now, as far as a build, I'm currently running her on Tyranny, but because you would be trying to get as much attack potency out of her, you would actually be running her on War Machine for Desolate Lands. Um, that would be one of the best things because if you look here at the Nether Bloom proc, uh, this blast deals damage equal to 85% of the caster's attack, uh, or uh, yeah, caster's attack to the carrier right and then to two other enemies and then has a 50 percent chance of silencing you're not silencing but the more attack you have the more damage that this will actually do um and then of course you would typically be running her with like another attack percent lead um so usually units like zora would be paired up with her like etc right so that's kind of that but that's pretty much going to be that guys uh we got essentially all the esters that i would recommend for desolate lands from the lower tier or lower rarities that i feel like are must builds you absolutely want to build these espers um they're going to help you with this progress uh if not if something else uh in the game as well so definitely make sure you put these units on your priority list at some point to get to so that's going to be pretty much that guys stay blessed stay charged up and i'll catch you guys in the next one